Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to explore a fascinating and fundamental concept in electronics, resonance in an RLC series circuit. We'll break down exactly what this means, why it happens, and what conditions are necessary for it to occur. By the end, you'll have a clear understanding of this important principle. Let's begin by looking at the circuit itself. On the screen, you see a diagram labeled FIG RLC series circuit. Let's understand what we're looking at. This is a series circuit, which simply means that all the components are connected one after another in a single loop. The current, which is the flow of electricity, has only one path to follow, so it passes through each component in turn. The first component is a resistor, represented by the letter R and a zigzag symbol. Its property is resistance, measured in ohms. A resistor's main job is to impede the flow of current, converting electrical energy into heat. It behaves the same way in both direct current, DC, and alternating current, AC, circuits. The second component is an inductor, represented by the letter L and a coil symbol. Its property is inductance, measured in henries. An inductor is essentially a coil of wire. It resists changes in current. When the current tries to change, the inductor creates a magnetic field that pushes back, opposing the change. This opposition is called inductive reactance. The third component is a capacitor, represented by the letter C and a symbol of two parallel plates. Its property is capacitance, measured in farads. A capacitor stores electrical energy in an electric field. It resists changes in voltage. It does this by charging up or discharging. This opposition to the flow of alternating current is called capacitive reactance. Finally, at the bottom, we have the AC supply. This is our power source. Unlike a battery which provides a constant DC voltage, an AC supply provides a voltage that continuously alternates, swinging back and forth in a sine wave pattern. This alternating nature is key to understanding resonance. So, we have a resistor, an inductor, and a capacitor all connected and aligned to an AC power source. This is our RLC series circuit. Now, what is resonance? In simple terms, resonance in this circuit is a special condition that occurs at a very specific frequency of the AC supply. At this resonant frequency, the circuit behaves in a unique and very useful way. Let's explore the five key conditions that define this state of resonance. Condition number one, inductive reactance equals capacitive reactance. This is the most fundamental condition for resonance. The text says, inductive reactance should be equal to capacitive reactance. That is XL equals XC. Let's break this down. As we mentioned, both the inductor and the capacitor offer a type of opposition to the AC current, called reactants. However, they do so in opposite ways and their opposition depends on the frequency of the AC supply. The inductor's opposition, its inductive reactants, which we call X sub L, increases as the frequency of the AC supply increases. The faster the current tries to change, the more the inductor fights back. The capacitor's opposition, its capacitive reactance, which we call X sub C, does the exact opposite. It decreases as the frequency increases. At high frequencies, the capacitor is charging and discharging so rapidly that it offers very little opposition to the current flow. Resonance is the magic point, the one specific frequency, where these two opposing effects are perfectly balanced. The opposition from the inductor becomes exactly equal to the opposition from the capacitor. They effectively cancel each other out. So, the core condition for resonance is, X sub L equals X sub C. Condition number 2, the power factor of the circuit is 1. The text states, the power factor of the circuit is cos phi equals 1. To understand this, we first need to know what phase and power factor mean. In an AC circuit, the voltage and current are both sine waves. However, they don't always peak and cross zero at the same time. The difference in timing between them is called the phase angle, represented by the Greek letter phi. An inductor causes the current to lag behind the voltage. A capacitor causes the current to lead the voltage. At resonance, because the effects of the inductor and capacitor cancel each other out, this lead and lag also cancel out. The overall phase angle, phi, becomes zero. This means the voltage and current are perfectly in sync. 
The power factor is a measure of how effectively the circuit is using the power supplied to it. It's calculated as the cosine of the phase angle, or cosine of phi. When the phase angle phi is zero, the cosine of zero is one. A power factor of one is the ideal scenario. It means the circuit is behaving like a pure resistor, and all the power being delivered by the source is being consumed by the circuit, primarily as heat in the resistor. No power is wasted being stored and returned by the inductor and capacitor. The graph shown here illustrates this. The vertical axis is the power factor, cos phi, and the horizontal axis is the frequency, f. You can see a curve that starts at zero, rises to a peak, and then falls back down. The peak of this curve occurs at the resonant frequency, which is labeled f sub r. At this exact frequency, the power factor reaches its maximum possible value of 1, because the phase angle, phi, is 0. On either side of this frequency, the circuit is either more capacitive or more inductive, and the power factor is less than 1. Condition number 3, the voltage and current are in phase. This point is a direct result of the previous one. The text says, the voltage and current in the RLC series circuit are in phase with each other. The graph below this point shows two sine waves plotted over time. One wave, perhaps the taller one, represents the voltage, and the other represents the current. The key thing to notice is that both waves start at zero together, they reach their positive peaks at the same time, they cross zero going downwards at the same time, and they reach their negative peaks at the same time. They are perfectly synchronized. This is what in phase means. There is no time delay between them. This only happens at the resonant frequency. Condition number four, the current in the circuit is maximum. The text states, current in the circuit is maximum and given by I equals V over R. This is one of the most important consequences of resonance. Let's think about the total opposition in the circuit. The total opposition to current in an AC circuit is called impedance, represented by the letter Z. This impedance is a combination of the resistance, R, and the two reactances, X sub L and X sub C. At resonance, we establish that the inductive reactance and capacitive reactance cancel each other out. This means the only thing left opposing the current is the simple resistance, R. Therefore, at the resonant frequency, the total opposition, or impedance, of the circuit is at its absolute minimum. According to Ohm's law, current is equal to voltage divided by opposition. Since the opposition, impedance, is at its minimum, the current flowing through the circuit must be at its maximum. The formula for this maximum current is simple, I equals V divided by R, because R is the only opposition left. The graph shown here perfectly visualizes this. The vertical axis represents the current, I, and the horizontal axis represents the frequency, F. The curve shows that at very low and very high frequencies, the current is low. But as the frequency approaches the resonant frequency, F sub R, the current rises sharply to a peak. This peak is the maximum current the circuit will allow, and it occurs precisely at resonance. This is why resonance circuits are so useful for tuning, like in a radio, where you want to pick up one specific frequency with the strongest possible signal. Condition number 5, the impedance of the circuit is minimum. This is the other side of the coin to the previous point. The text says, impedance of the circuit is minimum and given by Z equals R. As we just discussed, impedance, Z, is the total opposition to current flow. The full formula for impedance in a series RLC circuit is Z equals the square root of, R squared plus the quantity, X sub L minus X sub C, squared. At resonance, we know X sub L equals X sub C. So, the term x sub l minus x sub c becomes zero. The formula simplifies to z equals the square root of r squared plus zero, which is just z equals the square root of r squared. This simplifies to z equals r. This tells us that at the resonant frequency, the total impedance of the circuit drops to its lowest possible value, and that value is simply the resistance of the resistor in the circuit. The final graph illustrates this concept. The vertical axis is impedance, Z, and the horizontal axis is frequency, F. The curve is a U-shape. At low and high frequencies, the impedance is high. But as the frequency approaches the resonant frequency, F sub R, the impedance dips down to a minimum point. 
this minimum impedance value is exactly equal to the resistance, R. So, to summarize, resonance in a series RLC circuit is a special state that occurs at a single, specific frequency. At this resonant frequency, the opposing effects of the inductor and capacitor cancel each other out. The circuit behaves like a pure resistor, with a perfect power factor of 1. The voltage and current are perfectly in phase. The total opposition, or impedance, is at its minimum. And because the opposition is at its minimum, the current flowing through the circuit is at its maximum. These five interconnected conditions define the state of resonance, a powerful principle used in everything from radio tuners to filters and oscillators.